Let's turn our attention to your second stock, Todd. And uh, I think one of the themes that I have recognized from our uh, most recent shows, and even with this one, as we were identifying these stocks, is that the aging baby boomer population is a massive, massive opportunity for investors to get in on just growth opportunities, not just on the drug side, but also, too, on the health care insurance side as well. Yeah, I mean, you talk about a huge market. 10,000 baby boomers per day uh, turning 65, a longer living population. That's significant because it means demand uh, for healthcare services by the elderly is increasing. And that should put a company like WellCare Health, symbol WCG, in a great position to profit from its Medicaid and Medicare insurance business. Yeah, so it looks like here, um, WellCare plays a huge part in the marketplace for insurance, primarily Medicaid and Medicare. And really, it's been interesting watching this particular stock, especially coming off of the midterm elections, because now that we have the Democrats in the House, things have certainly changed for this company. Yeah, which is interesting because you know the last two years um, after Trump was elected, and of course the the Republicans had control of both the House and the Senate. Uh, there was a te- there was an attempt to eliminate Obamacare, and Obamacare includes a provision that expanded Medicaid. Now states didn't have to opt into Medicaid expansion, but many of them did. So, so one of the fears over the last two years was that if Obamacare was rolled back, then what would happen with Medicaid expansion? And one of the things that investors have to recognize is that what happens with these insurers is that they go out and they bid on a per member basis. So the more people who are enrolled in Medicaid programs, the more money they make in premiums. So Medicaid expansion has been a huge win for companies like Wellcare Health. And the threat of that getting rolled back obviously was something that you know was on the minds of investors. Now that uh, the Democrats took over control of the House. The likelihood, I think, of any kind of a real repeal or replace that, that jeopardizes Medicaid expansion is is extreme. Has become de risk. It's it's low to non existent in my view, um, and I think that that you know provides an interesting, I guess, tailwind, if you will, or backdrop backstop to uh, well care health stock price, which over the last you know six to eight weeks has tumbled about twenty five percent. And it's not just Medicaid, but it's also Medicare too. Um, and also too, it sounds like this company is pretty um, pretty aggressive when it comes to acquisitions as well. So it's got multiple areas that it's targeting and really strategically focusing on. Yeah, I mean they get most of their sales from the Medicaid side of things. Three point two billion in revenue from Medicaid in the third quarter. That represented about sixty four percent of their total revenue of five point one billion. So they're still predominantly. Um, a Medicaid insurer. Uh, they have been going out and bidding in new states. They won um, uh, new bids. They won contracts in Florida and Arizona. They also went out and they bought a competitor called Meridian. All of those things are, are going to increase and drive revenue higher on the Medicaid side of things in 2019. And then on the Medicare side of things, they're also selling Medicare Advantage businesses. So they're targeting all those people who are turning 65 and are looking at it, trying to figure out do I want to stay with regular Medicare? Uh, traditional Medicare, or do I want to go with a Medicare Advantage plan? And because you know, traditional Medicare doesn't have out-of-pocket limits on what the patient will have to pay. Um, many people are choosing these Medicare Advantage plans, and as a result, its Medicare revenue is growing. They did 1.6 billion in Medicare revenue in the third quarter, and that was up from 1.47 billion. The year before, and that's because they're getting more and more members to sign up for their Medicare Advantage plans. And it also sounds like WellCare is also uh, upping their full year guidance for 2018 as well. So it sounds like they're growing not just on the acquisition front, but also organically as well. What can you tell us about that, Todd? Well, you know, the revenue was up year over year 15%, as I mentioned. They're a profitable company. They do a good, their medical cost ratio, MCR ratio um, is somewhere in the mid 80s, you know, so, so they, they do a good job as far as managing their risk in that way. Um, they also have a nice little tailwind coming um, soon because they agreed to buy Aetna's Part T business uh, in September. And, and as listeners may remember, Aetna has agreed to combine with CVS 
But to get approval for that combination from the Department of Justice, Aetna had to get rid of its Part D um, you know, revenue. So what ended up happening is WellCare went out and bought it. <laughs> so that's go- they're going to get about an additional 1.5 billion in revenue tailwinds, uh, assuming you know all the members stick around uh, once they officially have taken that over. And I think we'll we'll probably see most of that revenue show up in 2020. So it may not be in a 2019 thing, but in 2020. So you've got you know the advantage of the Medicaid expansion in Florida and Arizona, organic growth, Medicare Advantage growth, and then the potential tailwind, obviously, from buying the part. D that could help support uh, growth in in two years rather than in the next twelve months. Yeah, so lots of opportunities for well care there. 